Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, you guys. You, you know, got it. the only other convention or fest I've ever attended was a furry fest convention in Toronto. So if you can show that slide. And it was not intentional. I was dropping my son off at hockey camp. And when I checked us into the hotel, I saw all these people dressed up as college mascots in fuzzy costumes and big animal heads. I asked the clerk what was going on. And I was informed that we were on the premises of the largest furry convention in North America. Next slide. It was a gathering of like-minded people who shared a passion for dressing up as fuzzy forest creatures. And when they took off their chipmunk heads, they had huge smiles gripping their faces. So this explains the first time, but I wound up staying at that hotel and overlapping with the furries for the next three years. Hey, I had to be in Toronto. And from an anthropological perspective, I like being around people who are doing what they love. As Hunter S. Thompson said, buy the ticket, take the ride. So here we are at Stoicon, and we're a group of like-minded people, hopefully with big smiles of recognition and big heads full of wisdom. There's an old trick to public speaking. In order to calm your nerves, you envision your audience in their knickers. But since I can't see you, I'm going to envision you all as furries. Next slide. See, I feel better already. I am so grateful to be a part of this with you. This is the most dazzling coterie of speakers. This is the greatest human library of Stoic wisdom. Next slide. It's an apothecary of insight, a gold mine of in information. Next slide. A lot of people regard the Stoics with the stiff upper lip meaning of the word. Next slide. But I have found such happiness, such vigor and purpose with the teachings of Stoicism. Next slide. When you change the way you think, what you think about changes. I was in my late twenties and my book club was invited to join some armchair archeologists on a dig at a historic Quaker estate on the east end of Long Island. This group of friends were adventurers, journalists, and documentary filmmakers. And I fit right in with this illustrious group. I was an MTV VJ, jeans model, and had just acted in Dumb and Dumber, after all. Next slide. As we toured the grounds of the manor, we were led to a formal garden with a reflecting pool. Along the border stood a row of huge marble busts. I was intrigued by the statuary and the grand dame of the manor quizzed us on who they were. My friend Mary recognized the curly headed visage of Marcus Aurelius in seconds without even lifting her head. Next slide. I was impressed. If my friend could clock the recognition and the reflection of one of the last of the five great emperors of Imperial Rome with barely a glance into the reflecting pool, I knew I better bone up on my classical studies. Next slide. Stupidity, next slide please. Stupidity, ignorance, and envy are powerful motivators. I dusted off my copy of Meditations and dove into reading Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus. It ignited my daily devotion of reading the Stoics. I've been at it for over two decades, and I think I'm a slightly better person for it. I don't get angry or anxious. I've become more steady and confident. This has been most helpful when I was diagnosed with a chronic illness called sarcoidosis of the central nervous system. It's a rare multi-system inflammatory disease. Next slide. A healthy immune system defends your body from disease, but with sarcoidosis, it's my immune system that's causing the problems. It causes lesions called granulomas, 
and I have cultivated a bumper crop of these growths in my brain, spinal column, and lungs. Next slide. When I first got sick, I thought the doctors would sort it out and I'd go back to my life, but it didn't turn out that way. This disease has irreparably damaged my central nervous system. I never imagined that the pain I was enduring was going to last forever and that I'd have to figure out how to live with this for the rest of my life. Next slide. Over 115 million Americans live with chronic pain. That's one in three people. Next slide. There's pain that hurts you and pain that changes you. Chronic pain, that changes you. The word pain comes from the Latin puona, meaning punishment. Living with chronic pain is like serving a life sentence for a crime you didn't commit. It's like waking up with the worst hangover you could ever imagine, but you never got the fun of getting hammered the night before. Next slide. Learning to coexist with the degenerative neurological disease is like living next door to a bully. Next slide. You never know when he's gonna ring your bell and knock you off your keister. So I try to keep the pain to fun ratio in my favor. Every day I have a choice. I can be useful or useless. I try to be useful and this contributes to my happiness. I do what I love and lots of it. Next slide. I love taking care of my rescue donkeys. Next slide. I love listening to Herb Albert and whipped cream and the other and other delights I highly recommend. I love to read, I love to learn. With Stoic philosophy, I have read myself a new brain. Next slide. Of all the brilliant Stoics, Epictetus, he is my main man. He was enslaved for over 30 years and then became one of the most revered philosophers of all time. His name means acquired. He was so savagely beaten and maimed by his master. His image always includes his crutch. Next slide. His intelligence was so radiant, he was given the gift of freedom. He is one of the wisest and wittiest teachers who has ever drawn a breath. He observed that everyone faces challenges and that a good life is within the grasp of all of us. He endured chronic pain and disability. I feel deeply connected to his writing because I understand what it's like to live with endless pain. The simplicity and clarity of his ideology are transcendent. It was written over 20 centuries ago, but it reads as if the ink is still wet. The book I return to the most is Sharon LaBelle's interpretation, The Art of Living. This translation reverberates through me like a firecracker in a symbol factory. Next slide. His quote, if you make beautiful choices, so too will you be. This message is as vital today as it ever was. His clarity and simplicity, that is Epictetus's gift to us. This is the thesis for my life. If I was the sort of person who writes ideas into my epidermis with needles and permanent ink, this thought would be my tramp stamp. Next slide. I love how it's never too late to become less stupid. Epictetus wrote that books are the training weights of the mind. Reading Epictetic has changed my brain. His teachings have changed my life. Next slide. I have kicked fear in the teeth because I understand that we can't control what happens. We can only control how we respond. My life is majestic and gnarly. The Stoic principles have illuminated my understanding that the obstacles we face can impede us or inspire us. Hardships 
often prepare ordinary people for an ordinary, an extraordinary destiny. On about half my days, pain flares have me homebound. There is an unpredictability that comes from chronic illness. Poet John Keats used the phrase negative capability, meaning the willingness to embrace uncertainty, live with mystery, and make peace with ambiguity. I, know I cannot control when pain flares will tether me to my home, roped like Gulliver. Next slide. I can only control how I will react. I have no choice, but I've just got to suck it up and accept it and get on with living my life. On the days I'm homebound and air hurts the skin on my neck, I read, I take online courses, and I work on making needlepoint whoopee cushion covers. Next slide. Illness and chronic pain have changed my life, and I've accepted this. Acceptance doesn't mean I'm unleashed from the resentment that my life didn't turn out the way I expected, but my illness does not limit my enthusiasm for life, but it rattles my cage every day. The language of illness is riddled with warlike metaphors, like, we're gonna battle this illness, we're gonna fight it with all we can, the chemo's gonna kill the cancer cells, Pain patients are often called warriors, but I reject this terminology. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I've negotiated a truce. I'm trying to live with pain in peace. I still live a life of vigor. I just spend about half of my life enduring a pain flare. Part of my treatment is I wear a prescription patch on my neck. Next slide. One evening, I was at a dinner party and I was seated next to this guy, Yo-Yo Ma. And he asked me about the patch. I explained that it released pain medication into my skin because of a chronic illness. And Yo took a beat and then he asked, what's it like to live with chronic pain? Mosquitoes were buzzing around that night and I made the analogy that when you get a, when you get a mosquito bite, it itches. So we scratch it. The scratching creates a low level pain sensation that distracts us from the itch. With chronic pain, I find myself looking for low level happiness to distract me from the nerve jangling pain that is my constant companion. Reading Epictetus is a great happiness. He's right up there with Herb Albert and Frank Sinatra. Next slide. In the early phase of my illness, I was embarrassed by the deficits caused by my disability. I was shamed. The way you would feel self-conscious if you had a big ugly stain on the front of your shirt. The writings of Epictetus have taught me to shed embarrassment and focus on what I can control. This is a great relief, a weight lifted. Carl Jung said that the word happiness would lose its meaning if it were not balanced by sadness. We all have a finite amount of time. We all have a limited amount of energy. It's up to us to make the most of it. The job of our lives is to work out who we are and become the best versions of ourselves. It's never too late to get smarter or stronger. But strength doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means you have the guts to face it. A coherent philosophy of life will propel you towards a meaningful life. When you change the way you think, what you think about changes. I may have a serious illness, but I don't take it too seriously. Through the teachings of the Stoics, I've learned acceptance and resilience. Happiness and pain can coexist. Next slide. Pain is inevitable, but I believe suffering is optional. My favorite quote is from Lord Byron, who said, always laugh when you can. It's cheap medicine. Thank you so much for checking in.
Let's all continue to be magnificent additions to the human race. And next slide. Since ascent, humans are just big bags of chemicals, and when we see something funny, we feel good. And I always feel good checking out this turtle and a pair of jeans. So thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. And I am very sorry about the screw up. And thank you very much for helping me with these slides. <laughs>